This video and all content on this channel is performed by a pest control professional and it is always recommended to hire a pest control pro in your area to perform any pest control in or outside your home. Pesticides can harm you and your loved ones. Anyone who is performing the information in this video is doing so at their own risk. If you decide to try the info provided in this video, please always check with the local laws in your area and read the labels of any product you use. The label is the law. Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. And today, I wanna to talk about why bed bugs are so hard to get rid of. It's gonna be a little lengthy video, but I'm gonna go into in depth a lot of things like pesticide resistances and treatment methods and even pesticides that I use today and other pesticides that the industry uses and techniques they use to get rid of bed bugs. Uh, so if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to my channel. And <clears throat> first, I want to go over uh, why bed bugs are so uh, prevalent. You know, it, it wasn't until maybe, well, the first bed bug I, job I did was over 20 years ago. I didn't do any more bed bug work for maybe three or four years. And then it was maybe a stint of maybe about a year or two. And now it seems like I'm actually on my way to do one today. And so uh, I did one last week. I did one actually two days ago and I got to do another bed bug job today. And so it's something that is really growing uh, in number to the point where they're doing uh, TV shows about them. They're doing like 2020 broadcasts and stuff, you know, similar to that about bed bugs and the growing need for pest control in dealing with this problem. And you know me, my channel is all about do it yourself and if you can you know there are some things that i talk about on here that uh you know you can do yourself like for example cockroaches but i'm all about saving money as well and i feel like there are some things in the pest control field that if you were to try yourself while you will eliminate your pest problem it's actually cheaper and more effective to go with a professional. Bed bugs are not one of those things, believe it or not. In fact, the belief is that you can't kill bed bugs on your own. For one, you can't get the pesticides that we use and you don't have the proper training and there's no way that you can eliminate bed bugs on your own. This is what you will be told by a professional that comes into your home. They will tell you, especially if they're a salesman and they're just trying to make ends meet, they'll tell you, oh no, 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 you can't do that yourself. You'll have bed bugs forever. You'll never get rid of your problem. And this is not true. This is absolutely not true. And I'm gonna go over that later towards the end of this video when I go over the pesticides that we use today in today's world. But, and so you can skip ahead to that. If I think about it, I'll leave a timestamp below so you can just skip right on to that part of the video because that's what really, let's, let's face it, that's what you're here to learn about. But first, let's talk about what was going on because bed bugs used to be a real serious problem in the United States. They used to be a problem back in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. And what people did was they would take their beds, they would douse them in kerosene, they would take the, uh, a lot of them were made out of metal, they made their beds out of metal back then. In fact, a lot of these old vintage beds that are, you know, 50, 60, 70 years old, some over 100 years old, they're all made out of metal. And the reason they made them out of metal is because they would take the mattresses and the box springs and everything outside, they would burn them all on a heap, and then all that would be left would be the metal bed frame that you can bring in and paint, repaint, and hook back up in the house. So you didn't have to worry about the bed bugs living on the bed frame because it was metal, you could heat it, you could kill all the bed bugs on the frame, bring a bed back in the house and set it back up. So this is one of the reasons beds were actually made out of metal back so long ago. But now, you know, they've gone back to making a lot of wooden beds. and People are sleeping in wooden beds again. And so the bed bugs are starting to get, uh, you know, places to live, anywhere that the wood joins together, where it's screwed together. Uh, bed bugs will live in those cracks. They'll live on metal beds too, but uh, 
they're, you know, they'll live on any bed. They'll live even behind your baseboards. They'll live in your wall. They'll live around your uh, outlets and your, your light sockets and places. They'll live up behind your crown molding and in your curtain rods and really pretty much anywhere. I have found bed bugs living just about everywhere you could imagine inside a home. I've found them living inside uh, around people's commode. I've had them living in the, around the bathtub. I found them living around a bathtub one time. Um, so there's lots of places that bed bugs can actually survive in your home and they don't have to live on your bed. And, and this goes over the reason that I don't actually provide heat treatments to my customers, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, um, bet DDT. DDT was one of the best pesticides that the industry had for the elimination of bed bugs. When DDT was invented, we, we were able to go in and eradicate these insects fairly easily. Um, the exterminator would come in, they'd treat with DDT, and it was revolutionary. It was so revolutionary, we were actually getting ahead of the bed bug infestation and pretty much completely wiped it out. There really weren't very many need, very much need for a bed bug exterminator after DDT was invented. So this is what you'll hear in the industry a lot. This is what you'll hear about people say. They'll say, oh, well, if they would just bring back DDT, because DDT was actually made out, they were outlawed it back in the 70s. It was banned. The EPA started to eliminate uh, harmful pesticides. So what it is is DDT is, uh, it was causing issues with animals and uh, the high risk, potential risk to harm humans. And so they actually took DDT off the market. And this is not, now people will tell you that the reason the bed bugs are so bad is because they took DDT away. This is not true. If you research, you will find that the bed bugs were actually developing an immunity, a resistance to DDT. When DDT was outlawed, the bed bugs had pretty much become completely immune to DDT. While DDT wiped out most of the bed bug infestations across the United States, they were running into issues where it wasn't actually killing the bugs anymore. And so this is what we're running into in today's world. A lot of the pesticides on the market don't actually kill the bugs. So bugs, roaches, uh, fleas, um, uh, bed bugs develop a pesticide immunity. When, when bugs are exposed to a pesticide, especially in a weakened state where the, the chemical is actually weaker and it's, it's starting to lose its effectiveness and the bugs come into contact with it, or maybe it's not mixed strong enough, maybe it's not mixed to label, it's actually mixed weaker than normal. Um, this will, what this does is it starts to develop a uh, chemical immune bug. The bug doesn't actually die from the pesticide, it becomes exposed to the pesticide, but because it's in such low volume, the bug actually survives the pesticide and then passes this genome into its offspring and when the offspring are, are you know hatch out of their eggs or whatever they are immune to the chemical and it only takes the uh, bear actually the company bear chemicals actually did a study on insects and their ability to build resistance and they found that within 90 days a cockroach infestation was completely immune to one pesticide that they used at a weaker state. So when they used the pesticide at full strength, it would kill the roaches, but when they used it at half strength, it would actually develop a uh, chemical resistant cockroach. So this is something that happens in the insect world is when the pesticides aren't used to label and they're not actually mixed to label that you end up developing these super bugs that can't be killed by anything. And that's mostly when you go to the store and you buy your pesticide over the counter, the pesticides that you buy over the counter are mixed, pre-mixed, especially if you get something like uh, Home Defense or uh, some, uh, a couple of other products that they make that they already pre-mix. They're pre-mixed with a very broad label. So this is something a lot of people don't understand in pesticide 
is that <clears throat> the pesticide label will tell you. For example, let's use Demon. Uh, Demon Max, is the active ingredient in Demon Max is cypermethrin. Cypermethrin, to kill most any bug in ever, I mean ants, uh, silverfish, spiders, you know, it's half an ounce to a gallon of water. So you take your half ounce, you put it in, you mix a gallon of water, and that makes a gallon of Demon Max pesticide. All right. If you want to do a clean out for cockroaches, you have to mix one full ounce of Demon Max to a gallon. So you're actually mixing it double strength of what you would to kill spiders or ants or other bugs. So when you buy a pre-mixed pesticide over the counter, like Bayer Home Advanced or whatever they call it, the you know the ones that come in the little plastic jug with the little little teeny tiny sprayer, it looks like the end of a Clorox bottle. Um, those have come pre-mixed, and they come pre-mixed typically with the lesser of the insects listed. So if it takes half an ounce to a gallon to kill most every bug, well, that's the way the pesticide comes mixed. If you want it to use, and it'll have cockroaches on the label, but if you wanted to use it for cockroaches, you're probably going to end up uh, developing a chemical immune cockroach because the pesticide's mixed half strength half of what it's needed to actually do a clean out and you're not going to be as effective getting rid of your roaches and you'll actually develop a super roach that won't die from the pesticide. So this is how pesticide resistances work and this is what I was saying at the beginning of the video as to why this is going to be a little bit of a lengthy video because I want to go over why bed bugs are so hard to kill. I want to talk about the different reasons that people actually have these problems with these bugs and why they're having, they can't kill them. Why they're, why when they spray these pesticides in their house, they just don't kill them. In fact, it looks like a bed bug just looks up and laughs at them and says, oh yeah, try again, try again. That's not, that's, I'm immune to that. That won't kill me. And this is why. It's because the pesticides are actually mixed weaker and not, they're not mixed strong enough to kill bed bugs. Now, does this mean you need to mix it stronger? No, it means that they're immune. It doesn't matter how strong you mix it. If they're immune, they're immune. You can't, you can't kill them because you, they're immune. They're resistant. So, how do you deal with resistant bed bugs? So, this is something the industry started to develop during the time when DDT was being outlawed is they looked into the structure of DDT. So DDT has a, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the chemical makeup is actually similar to uh, pyrethrins. Now, pyrethrins occur naturally in the environment. They, they, they occur in chrysanthemums, marigolds, and other plants and trees and things. They're natural pesticides that plants actually produce to kill bugs and keep certain bugs off of them because if they didn't produce these chemicals, you know, the ants and the different bugs and stuff would actually kill the plant. So, in fact, your organic farmers, a lot of organic farmers will actually plant chrysanthemums and marigolds around their crops because they're not allowed to use certain pesticides on their crops. But the flowers produce these pesticides naturally and the bugs won't crawl in and get into their potatoes or they won't get into their corn and stuff like that. So, uh, keep this in mind that this is a way that you can keep, you know, bugs and stuff away from your garden. But so, so what happened is they, they noticed that the, the, I mean, they knew this when they, when they created DDT, that it was similar to pyrethrins, but it's not a synthetic pyrethroid. So synthetic pyrethroids started to be developed around the time when DDT went off the market. A synthetic pyrethroid, so what that is, is it's a man-made duplicate. So basically what they've done is they've all the way down to the molecular level of a pyrethrin, which occurs natural, like we just talked about in flowers and stuff, they, they take that chemical and they enhance it molecularly to, so it will last longer. Because when you take the pyrethrin away from the flower, it breaks down really fast. In fact, a lot of your bug bombs, your, your you know, like Raid makes these little bug bombs that you can set off in your house, um, the little foggers, most of those have pyrethrins in them. And when the label says be out of your house for three hours or be out of the house for a day and then come back tomorrow, the reason it says that is because by the time you re-enter your home, the pyrethrins have dissipated into the air. They're no longer, uh, they're no longer volatile. You can go in, you're not going to hurt yourself. There's no more residue left because it's a pyrethrin and it breaks down really fast. 
So what the scientists have done is they've taken that molecule and they've enhanced it to last longer. And that's the family of pesticides that we've used for the past, you know, 50 years uh, are synthetic pyrethroids. And that's the way we combated bed bugs. So the problem with a synthetic pyrethroid, because it's a natural derived pesticide, it's not a natural pesticide, but it's actually taken from natural things. And, you know, like I said, it's similar, similar. Um, but because it's so similar, bed bugs can build resistance to it faster because it's something that they already recognize because it's so similar to pyrethrins. In fact, when you're exposed to a synthetic pyrethroid, your body treats it the same as a pyrethrin and actually kicks it out. It's like, oh, I know what that is. That's poison. Get that out of my bloodstream. Get it out of my system. Don't let that stuff build up in here because it can cause health problems. We got to get rid of that. And so it's real safe. It's one of the safer pesticides to actually use around people. Like if you were to treat daycares or hospitals or uh, nursing homes, places like that. In fact, a lot of those synthetic pyrethroids actually have those places on the label because they're so safe to use around people. But because they, the bugs recognize that what it is, their body also kicks it out and becomes immune to it. And the more they're exposed to it, the better their body is at eliminating it. And so they actually become immune to pyrethrins or synthetic pyrethroids faster. And there's, there's lots of different synthetic pyrethroids on the market. So like you've got Demon Max. Demon Max is a synthetic pyrethroid. Cypermethrin, uh, permethrin, um, you know, bifenthrin. Uh, there's lots of synthetic pyrethroids on the market. It's something that we use in the industry still to this day. But they're very inefficient at getting rid of bed bugs. Um, a lot of the companies even today still go in and kill bed bugs with bifenthrin or the name brand is Talstar. That's one of the name brands of bifenthrin. And uh, it's, it's not effective anymore at getting rid of bed bugs. It's actually pretty poorly. Uh, it doesn't work at all, really, hardly at all. Uh, I was using Talstar for a little while, and this is years ago, um, and it just it stopped working. It just was not working anymore on the bed bugs because they've developed an immunity to synthetic pyrethroids. So what do we use now? So this is now, now we've gotten into chemical immunity. We've, we've explained why the bed bugs aren't dying, but where are they coming from? You know, this is one of the problems is that, yeah, if, if the bed bugs aren't here, you know, we pretty much eliminated the bed bugs. Prior to the 70s, when, we, when they actually outlawed DDT, we really weren't having bed bug problems. Like I said, the first bed bug problem I ever did was about 20 to 22 years ago. I think I was 17 or 18 years old when I did my very first bed bug job. And I didn't do another one until I was in my 20s. And so the point is, is that they really aren't that big of a deal back in, you know, early 2000. They really weren't that big of a deal. People were starting to get them again, but it was very rare. It was very far and few between. Very few people had bed bugs. So, because we were using synthetic pyrethroids and they were still working, they were still actually eliminating the issue. But why can't we eliminate them now? Why are they becoming such a severe problem now? Okay, so, we have increased since the 80s, we've actually increased our travel. We're going in the US, uh, the US, British Commonwealth, Canada, you know, all the different um, first world countries, we have actually started to increase travel. We are going into places of the world that still have bed bug problems. Um, third world countries have these issues still to this day. They still have bed bugs. They still burn their beds. They still take the stuff outside and get rid of it. And just as if it was like over 100 years ago, it's it's over 100 years ago today. They're, they're living this way today. And so uh, when we allow these people into our country and we visit these pe these places, uh, ourselves and you know whether it's through a mission or whether it's just through you know vacation I mean we vacation to Mexico we vacation to Cabo we vacation to um, Jamaica we vacation to uh, you know Africa and lots of different places that people vacation to that are still considered really third world countries and they have bed bugs in their hotels they have bed bugs in their uh, you know and then you bring them home in your suitcase 
So we're, we're importing bed bugs, not even knowing it. We're bringing them back into the country, and uh, we're not even going to touch illegal immigration. But the point is, is that when you allow for third world travel, you're going to have third world problems. And one of those problems is bed bugs. And so with the increase in travel and the increase in movement around the globe, we are circulating the bed bugs again. So we're having a resurgence of a problem that was pretty much eliminated back in the 70s, and now they're back. So how are we dealing with the bed bug issue today? There are a couple of chemicals on the market that I recommend for the control of a bed bug problem. The reason that I recommend them is because they're extremely, extremely safe. The pesticide industry has come an extremely long way when it comes to the elimination of any insect, really, with the invent of neonicotinoid family of pesticides. So we talked about DDT, we talked about synthetic pyrethroids, pyrethrins, uh, organophosphates, that's another family of pesticides that we were using. Durisban and diazinon are considered organophosphates. That's, that's something that we used back in the 80s to help eliminate bed bugs. Um, but now that we're using uh, neonics, which neonicotinoid, it's, neonic is the, is the abbreviation. Um, neonic is what people have moved on to. Now, the reason that we've moved on to a neonic family of pesticides is because they are even safer than synthetic pyrethroids. And we already talked about them and how the body recognizes them for what they are and, and pushes them out and eliminates them. Well, the neonic um, is even safer. In fact, a lot of your neonicotinoid uh, pesticides have no signal word on the label, which a signal word are things like caution, danger, warning. Uh, they are to let you know that this is a poison. You, you want to be very careful because this is a poison. Um, a lot of your newer pesticides, like Crossfire, for example, which is what I use myself to eliminate bed bugs, has no signal word on the label at all. It has one of the loosest labels allowed in the industry. And with newer pesticides like Samurai, which is also an MGK product for ants, it is no signal word. There's no signal word on the label. It's a very loose label, very safe to use around children and pets and adults and uh, you know invalids and all all different types of people with all different types of problems. It's absolutely one of the safest pesticides in the world. And this is what I use to kill bed bugs. Like I said, Crossfire is amazing. And that's what I recommend on my channel. Now there are other pesticides out there that are actually labeled for the control of bed bugs, like Apprehend. So Apprehend is a spore. It's a type of a mold spore and what it does is you spray around the band of the bed and you spray around the baseboards and you treat basically like, you know, with any other pesticide, you, you, do, you pretty much treat all the same areas that you treat with Crossfire. And when the bed bugs crawl over it, it breaks down their exoskeleton so that the, uh, and the bug dies, you know, that way. It's basically like a parasite. It's a parasite to the bed bug and it kills the bed bug. Um, but, and it lasts for 90 days. It's really effective. In fact, um, a lot of the people, if, you, if you're in pest, pest control and you've watched all the way to this part of the video, uh, leave me a comment below and let me know if you use Apprehend or not and how well it works for you and let my community know how well it works. But the reason that I don't support Apprehend on this channel <clears throat> is because I'm all about do it yourself. I, I like to teach people how to you know, kill bugs on their own without, the, uh, without having to hire pest control. And the problem with Apprehend is that the company that actually produces Apprehend only sells it to people that only sell with uh, to, to you if you have a license. So you, you have to have a pesticide applicator license in order to purchase Apprehend. You can't just buy it as a consumer. So um, I can buy it, I can get it, I can use it, uh, but you can't. And the whole point of my channel is to teach the just the you know the normal person just walking down the road, Joe or whatever or Sally or whoever, that they can do it. That you can kill bed bugs and you don't have to have specialized equipment. You don't have to have uh, you know the the knowledge. I mean, the fact that you're watching my channel, you'll have all the knowledge you need. Go through and look at my videos on bed bugs. I teach people how to do it. I show you how to do it. I've got videos of me actually performing bed bug work with Crossfire, showing you exactly how to apply it and where to apply it. So, uh, in fact, 
I've had people call me and tell me and crying on the phone saying things like, I can't believe that I was, I've was i been able to sleep. I haven't been able to sleep in months and some people years. And this is the first time since applying Crossfire, now that they don't have any more bed bugs, they've been able to sleep. That's That says something. You know, if, if just anyone, anyone with that, I mean, I've got over 30 years of experience in pest control. I started when I was six years old because I was little and I could fit in the crawl space. You know, I was little, little. Um, now I'm 39. I'll be 40 this year. I, uh, I've been doing it for all my life. I'm a professional. If these people are able to go and buy Crossfire and kill bed bugs on their own, that says a lot about Crossfire. They have no experience with, with pest control procedures or methods or practices like I do and they're still able to get rid of their bed bugs so it absolutely does work it's an amazing pesticide it's what I recommend and now that you've made it all the way all the way to the end of my video uh, let me know that you made it to the end of the video by leaving a comment below I know these long videos I really don't like to do really long videos but I felt like this was an important thing to go over I wanted to talk about uh, why bed bugs are so hard to get rid of the pesticide resistances because this this so this is the reason so so you got pesticide resistance that's the number one reason that bed bugs are so hard to get rid of Two, travel people are spreading them amongst themselves friends family they're going to their friends and family's homes and they're picking them up their friends probably don't even know they have bed bugs but they're going in and they're picking them up this is another reason bed bugs are so hard to get rid of because even if you do get rid of them in your own house and you eliminate them in your own house well you going back to your friend's house you go pick them up again and so we need to work together to try to eliminate this problem and this is another reason why I'm here on YouTube and why I'm telling people this is how you get rid of bed bugs because we need to work together to solve this problem it's so another thing that has cropped up is the internet so you're probably thinking well I'm on the internet watching you right now trying to learn about how to kill bed bugs the internet's a very useful tool sometimes sometimes it is there are people on YouTube there are people that have written blogs there are unlimited amounts of resource material out there that is absolutely based on lies and is not true um, so this this furthers the fear that if you get bed bugs you'll never be able to get rid of them because you've tried these methods a lot of the people watching this video right now you have tried diatomaceous earth you may have even tried a heat treatment they don't work they're not as effective as pesticide application pesticide works the best I've been doing it for over 20 years killing bed bugs it works the best but you'll see these people and they'll say they'll have videos like the easiest way to get rid of bed bugs or the cheapest way to get rid of bed bugs and they'll have some cockamamie idea like spreading a dust all over your house that causes respiratory diseases like diatomaceous earth and it's it's not effective the thing is diatomaceous earth is like glass all over the floor and would you want to walk across glass all over the floor of course not neither does a bug and so they avoid it and it actually just makes the problem worse so these things these videos these blogs these resources that people claim they have by searching through Google actually don't work but they're getting a lot of traction because they make it seem like getting rid of bed bugs is easy or cheap and it's not easy and it's not cheap even if you do it yourself you're probably going to be a few hundred dollars in the hole trying to get rid of bed bugs bed bugs are very difficult to get rid of because of the immunity issue that I talked about they're immune to the pesticides that you buy over the counter and so you get frustrated because you've tried everything and you're using everything and you're going and you're buying all these different you know solutions but it's not effective they're not effective solutions they're taking advantage of you in your gullible state they're they're treating you I mean you're upset you're worried you're you're aggravated and you're willing to try anything and this guy's peddling snake oil I'll try his you know essential oils or I'll try uh, diatomaceous earth or 
I'll try this bug spray that isn't even labeled for bed bugs, and it's actually dangerous if you apply that stuff on your mattress, and you could make yourself really sick, but you just want to be able to get a good night's sleep, and you're willing to do anything to do it. Just kill these bugs so I can sleep, because if you go, if you go for a very long time without sleep, the rational part of your brain shuts off and you're just willing to do whatever it takes to sleep. When my daughter was a little, little bitty baby, there was one week, I probably only got eight hours of sleep the entire week. And it, it affects you. It affects your head and it makes you willing to do drastic things just to be able to get to sleep. I would go out, I would leave an extra hour or two in the morning to go to work. I mean, as early as I would have to leave, and then I would pull over in a Food Lion or a Kroger parking lot, and I would take an hour or two nap, just so I didn't get woken up by my baby, because babies cry. But, you know, rationally, you know, why would you want to go and sleep in, the, in, a, in a grocery store parking lot? Well, because I needed sleep. And so I know what it's like to go without sleep. I know. But using these methods, and go read the comments on my DE videos. Go read them. People say, oh, I did it. This guy's lying. He's not telling you the truth. I am telling you the truth. I'm telling you exactly what I do. I am giving you trade secrets that other exterminators hate. They hate that I'm sitting here telling you how to get rid of your bugs, and I'm being honest about it, and I'm being truthful about it. Now, I'm not spreading lies and propaganda and false hope that you can get rid of them with just $10 it's, or one ingredient solution like DE. It's not, it's not viable. It doesn't work. I want you to get a good night's sleep. I want you to get rid of your bed bugs. I want you to be effective at getting rid of your bed bugs. So it's I, not, yeah, I can, I can make money on bed bugs. I do make money on bed bugs. People call me, I go to their house, I kill their bed bugs. It's, it's, it is a way to make a living, but Everyone is going to end up having these things, so we need to try to eliminate these bugs forever. And hopefully, I won't get them. I mean, I'm going right in houses, and you know, I always run the risk of bringing them home with me, but I don't want them either. And I don't think anybody should have to suffer with these horrible, blood sucking parasites. You guys have a really great day. I really appreciate it. And like I said, if you had yourself bought Crossfire and used Crossfire, and have been happy with the success that Crossfire brings, leave me a comment below. Let my audience know that it works. Y'all have a great day. Appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. Share my video. Like and subscribe to the channel. And remember, Thursday nights I do live streams, so I'll be live on the air Thursday nights. You can come in and ask me yourself, Jason, what do you use to kill bed bugs? And I'll tell you. Y'all have a great night great day, great time, wherever it is. Y'all have a good one. Bye.